Today we have a video on how to remove and replace your screen in your Cadillac Q system. This is the fix for the common uh, unresponsive, erratic touch, or cracked appearance. If you have not removed the module from your vehicle, go ahead and click the links in the description below and get the, the module out and then you can start here to uh, disassemble the unit. First off, we have two different types of screws. One is a Phillips head one, goes into plastic, and the other one is a machine screw that is meant to go into metal, and you'll use a Phillips head number two screwdriver to remove it. Also, be very careful when you're inside the unit. Don't touch any white flat cables. I've had many customers that accidentally or intentionally remove the white cable and it causes uh, irreversible damage to the unit, so it's best just to avoid it. If you have not removed the connectors from the back of the module, this shows how the tabs operate. They're simple push down design and it levers up to release it from the connection. The USB plug here is a little bit different. There are two um, securing tabs, one on the top, one on the bottom that you're going to need to move away from the plug to disengage it. Here in the video I, uh, I put a little screw or little pliers down there to hold it and then one in the very top so it disengages that tab and then you can go ahead and pull it out uh, free of obstruction. The first step is to remove these black bolts. There are six of them and you use a seven millimeter socket to remove. With the bolts out, you can go ahead and lift up on the side plates. Uh, lift upwards and tilt away from the unit to remove these. They're held in place with uh, some tabs on the side. It should be pretty obvious once you uh, once you get it out. Now you can use your Phillips head one screwdriver to remove these five plastic screws. Once you remove these, keep them together so they don't get mixed up with the other screws and will help make things a lot easier during reassembly. Now we will use the number two Phillips head screwdriver to remove these eight machine screws. Again, keep these separate and uh, together that way when you reassemble them, you'll know where they go and uh, you won't lose or, or mix any of it up. With all the screws removed, we can now lift off the back cover and set it aside. Now the goal is to remove the lower compartment box and there are seven plastic screws held in place there pointed out. Go ahead and remove those. Now we just have to unclip the compartment box light. Go ahead and pull on that little connector as shown with the micro ESD pliers and it will disengage. Now you can open the compartment box door by simply pushing on it on both sides and it will rotate over. And you can go ahead and loosen the side silver machine screws. These don't need to be removed, just loosened up a little bit so it can release the compartment box.
Now the only thing holding the box to the metal chassis are these black tabs, one on each side. To disengage you'll need to push those towards the module, push them in the direction of the arrow and they will release and now the module can separate from the box. For this next step you're going to want to be very careful. I recommend using the Q-Screens installation kit with the, the micro ESD tools to avoid damage here. This black clip is very fragile. You want to avoid breaking it off. There have been a couple cases of customers using a large screwdriver or vice grips on this and they ended up breaking the clip off. It cannot be repaired and requires a complete module replacement. When you unclip it, avoid being too aggressive and just be gentle with it to avoid any damage. Next step is to remove the nine screws that hold the factory screen in. These are all around the perimeter pointed out here. It's pretty straightforward, just remove these screws and keep them together. I would also recommend not using any power tools for this step. Uh, unlike in the video you see here, um, these screws are very soft and it's easy to strip out, so I'd recommend just doing it by hand to make sure you get good engagement with the screwdriver. Now with all those screws removed, we can simply lift up on the module and the old screen will come right out there. As you can see, this one suffered from the very common cracking uh, from that gel situation. All the Q-Screens products are gel free, so once you get it installed, you shouldn't have to worry about this again. Now it's time to place your Q-Screens replacement screen on. Be sure to remove the inner screen protector. I've had many customers that uh, complain of bubbles and it is simply due to the lack of following this step. So make sure you peel off that inner screen protector before placing the screen on the module. This is another step that trips people up occasionally. You just want to make sure that when you route the ribbon cable to the back, go through the upper slot. It's much larger and wider and is the uh, correct location. Sometimes people try routing it through the small uh, sharp area there and it just causes it to, to tear the ribbon cable. So avoid that and we'll have a better view at it um, in this next picture here. And here you can clearly see where the, the correct routing location is. Right there, it's perfect. Go ahead and set the screen on. Try to get it centered up as best you can, but we'll get the, the alignment done in the next step. This step can be a little bit tricky. Um, the first thing you wanna do is make sure you get the alignment pins 
pushed through the holes. So there is some flexibility with those metal ears you see. What you want to do is you just want to orient the, the screen pins and the metal ears so that they go through the holes just like that. Uh, do it on the right side first. You can use a small tool like a, a little screwdriver or the plastic trim removal tools to push the pins in the right location. But all you're trying to do here is just get those pins centered in the holes. And once you do that, you can go ahead to the next step and loosely secure the screws at that location. Now we can rotate around the module and do the same thing to the other side. The main goal here is to make sure those alignment pins get placed through the holes that are in the chassis. That way your screen is going to sit flush and be a good fitment. Um, a lot of the reviews that you read about people that have a, a lip or it not sticking or, or the screen sticking out is because they didn't follow this step and it causes the, the screen to stick out. So if you get those alignment pins in, you should be okay. Now we can move on to the final alignment pin located at the bottom. It's the same process, we're just trying to get that alignment pin pushed through that metal uh, chassis hole there, and once it goes through, you can go ahead and tighten that, that single screw up. All we have left to do now is tighten the remaining screws. So as you go around the perimeter, you may notice that some screws aren't fully exposed to the, uh, the plastic mounting hole. If that's the case and you can't get the screw in there um, very easily, I would just leave the screw out. Most of them should align pretty well, but as a rule of thumb, if you have half of the hole exposed, you can probably get the screw in. And again, if not, if it's going to be too much of a hassle, just leave it out and the screen will be fully secured with the other screws. Here's an example of where we're trying to get the screw in, but it's, the hole's not large enough to be exposed. So instead of uh, fighting with it or trying to get it in at an angle, just leave it out and move on to the next one. Here's a look at that screw hole. As you can see, it's not quite half of the hole exposed and having it go in there would be too much of an angle and it would probably crack or cause some binding. So in that one, if you see screws like that, I'd say leave them out. All right, this is the last tricky part of the installation. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you get this ribbon cable inserted correctly into the connector. Uh, many times I have a customer complaining about the touch response isn't working and it's because they uh, install this ribbon cable upside down so the black side should be facing up, the gold pin should be facing down just like in this image you see here and the tab should be facing towards you. So uh, you can use the install toolkit, the micro ESD pliers to hold it in place. Um, make sure that the, uh, the connector is held in place and then use a trim tool or some other kind of uh, soft delicate tool to clip down there and make sure it's secured just like that.
the difficult parts are over. Now we can move on to placing the compartment box. Once you get it oriented in the right position, try to align the, uh, the slots and the connectors and the tabs, and it will uh, just go around the hinging, the hinging door part just like that. Get those black tabs in place. Try to get the screw, the screw um, slots in place. Make sure the compartment box is all the way against the metal chassis. Sometimes we have customers that don't get it all the way there and as a result it sticks out and causes issues with the, the door opening or closing and, uh, and other power issues. So make sure it's fully seated against the metal chassis and then re-secure the seven plastic screws as you see in the photos here. Now we can turn the unit on its side and tighten those two side metal screws that secure the compartment box. Next is to plug in the compartment box light connector harness again. It goes right in that receptacle, it can only go in one way. Just get it installed and push it in until it clicks. Next step is to place the back cover on the module and move on to securing it with the plastic screws and the five holes you see there. Now we'll place the eight metal screws in with the Phillips number two screwdriver. There are two on the side and six facing up right here.
And the final step now is to place the side covers back on. It might help to come in at an angle on these. There's, it's kind of tricky. There's a few tabs and slots to line up, but once you get them on there, you can secure them with the six black seven millimeter bolts. That's everything. Great job on the installation. Be sure to plug in the module and test it before putting the interior back together. If you have any issues, keep watching for the troubleshooting section of common problems. As a thank you to our YouTube subscribers, we have a special promo code for 5% off any replacement screen for your Cadillac Q system. Simply add your screen to the cart check out and click the promo code box YT5 and you'll save 5% with free shipping or you can upgrade to two day or one day shipping if needed. Thanks for watching.